Good morning. I want to talk about smoking for a minute. Smoking cigarettes. I can remember the first cigarette I ever had was a Marlboro. I had just started driving and the chick that I was hanging out with was had stolen a pack from her daddy and we smoked it like cool girls. Um, I also remember being younger and having pretended to smoke with another girlfriend of mine. We would like light incense and we'd pretend to smoke. And then, um, they had these candy cigarettes that pff, they tasted good. And then you'd pretend to smoke with those. Um, when I was growing up, I had, uh, asthma. So, um, I was also allergic to cats and lived with cats and um, I ended up using inhalers and nebulizers, um, throughout my life. So eventually I decided to start smoking because that's the right thing to do if you have asthma. And I also have uh, been a singer my whole life. So now, three things that, uh, a few things that I have learned that help when I'm having an asthma attack. Singing, like big loud singing helps. Like if I'm short of breath, it's annoying to anybody who has to hear it, but even if it really does genuinely help. The other thing that helps um, if I'm short of breath, and by short of breath, I'm talking like you are breathing up here. Like your lungs are big. Like they go down like mid, mid body at least, down your back. You have huge lungs and most of us only breathe up here and that's where anxiety attacks happen. It's all <gasps> just, just this tense, stressed <clears throat> place. And so um, there's a fun thing that I learned in a yoga training um, with wording. And if you try to breathe, and sit there and say to yourself the words, I can't, I can't. Notice how hard it is for you to actually take a breath and then turn that off and then start doing the same thing but saying the words, I can, I can. And you'll notice yourself opening up and your lungs will open up. So the other thing, uh, so just simply telling yourself the words, I can, I can, if you're feeling uh, short of breath, uh, will help you to be able to breathe more into your belly. Um, and when you're breathing correctly into your belly, your stomach gets bigger on the inhale and it gets smaller on the exhale. And then the third helpful uh, thing that I have found is um, uh, black coffee and black tea. Um, if you make yourself a, you know, not a steaming hot cup of it because you don't want to burn yourself, but make yourself a cup of black coffee or black tea strong if you're short of breath and it will um, kick in. The, it, will help, it will help your... Uh, it will help uh, you breathe. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of uh, really amazing breathing techniques that are actually, uh, you have to actually be very careful with because you could uh, hurt yourself if you don't breathe correctly. So just, there's something called pranayama, which I suggest looking into. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's about breathing and breath and the life, you know, life comes from our breath and, um, so <clears throat> back to these, this smoking thing. I, uh, when I first started smoking, I hid it from my, my parents, um, uh, very well. Like I was like obsessed with hiding it from them. And then eventually, you know, I came out about being a smoker and da da da. And at first they were, uh, uh, you know, my, my, my dad was a cigarette smoker, but I never, I don't have any memories of him smoking. He quit. And I, and I say this with just because, just for the smokers, like, I, like it has nothing to do with him per se in the sense, the way that he ended up quitting was they, uh, he, he, he went to a shick center and they hooked him up to a shocker and it shocked him every time he took a drag. And he basically clockworked orange himself out of smoking. And, you know, he did it cause he, that was what he felt was the right thing to do. Um... I started uh, using the patch when I was, I want to say like 19, 18 or 19. And I, and I just remember having uh, ex like such violent nightmares that I blocked them out. Like I used to remember what they were, but I just remember it being gory and bloody and violent and scary. Um, another thing I wanted to point out was that the, there was a man that once said to me when I, when I smoked that he could sense the fear. That I can sense the fear, and and I and it always kind of stuck with me because the thing with smoking is there is a, it actually like helps me to think. Like when I have a cigarette, it kind of gets my mind off of 
whatever it is that I'm worrying about, I guess. And it kind of in a weird way helps me ground myself because I have smoked for so long and I have used it as a, as a go-to for so long. Um, but I have quit other things. Um, and so because of this, so I've quit drinking, I've quit using Adderall. I, I don't do any hard drugs. I don't, I barely even take Advils. The only time I ever even take an Advil is if I can't walk and I have bat, lower back problems that require me to, because I have a three-year-old, <laughs> I, I, I have to be able to walk. And so there's deeper things that I have to do to solve that problem, which is like certain types of slow daily um, exercise. Now, I've always been one to exercise and smoke. Like I live in a, in a high altitude world um, and I've always been into like walking and smoking. And so I really kind of like have tried to trick myself in some ways into saying like, well, at least if I'm exercising and eating well, then it's kind of, you know, it's, it, it makes up for, you know, the smoking. Also, I drink a lot of coffee and I, and I put those hand in hand. Whenever I say I'm going to quit smoking, that means I'll have to quit drinking coffee as well. I won't be able to just quit one or the other. I might be able to get away with like having like a black coffee to help with any like if I'm short of breath or something, but I would gen I genuinely put the two together. Um, and I think that it would eliminate a certain, back to that patch thing, I think that there is this like sense, I can't explain it, it's like this violent energy that um, I don't know how to put my finger on it. It's like this kind of just, I want to say like, fuck it. It's like this fuck it energy. But the other thing that I want to talk about is when I was uh, 17, I was working as a waitress in a, in a, in a, in a, and the cook would smoke while he was making everybody's breakfast. Um, and the waitress and I would stand in the kitchen and smoke while we were waiting for our orders. And I, as the young 17 year old, thought that was like the coolest thing. The day that I turned 18 in that town, they outlawed smoking inside. So that, it's just this weird, like, um, timing of it all. And, and, and like, and, and I actually think because I'm a smoker, I'm more self-conscious of certain things, of smells, of touch, because I, I understand if you are, if it really triggers you, it triggers you, you know, if, you know, if you think it's a really bad thing, I can't convince you that it's not, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but it actually speaks measures about others too, because smokers get really like, like, oh, the fucking smokers, you're not allowed to smoke here, like, you can't smoke inside, you can't smoke outside, and it just doesn't really um, help. It doesn't actually help. If you genuinely didn't want somebody to be smoking, things would be different. Um, like, it's not, I don't know. I don't know, but I've had a few dreams about cigarettes that, um, um, just, you know, uh, there was a time where I was in a yoga training and I actually forgot that I smoked for two weeks. I didn't even have one, I didn't have one cigarette for two, like two weeks, nothing, didn't, no craving, nothing. And I was in this intense yoga training. I shaved my head for the first time. I was like, uh, and I had, and I've been shaving my head ever since actually. And I, and I remember in this training, we all went and I was not advanced enough to be in this training. Um, everybody was at least like 15 years older than I was. And I, and I only knew, uh, Bikram yoga, hot yoga. And I was just immersed in this new yoga. And I, uh, did the hot yoga and the Bikram yoga to, to help me, uh, with my back problems, which I, to this day, swear by, even though I don't practice it like I should, I know it, I, I've met people in person that were told they would never walk again, and they did the Bikram, and they walked again, so that yoga specifically is wonderful for, for physical therapy, and people that are dealing with, with, like, deep body, body healing issues, um, but this other training, I remember we all went into this posture, the whole class went into this posture, and all of a sudden I felt like we were all these cogs on this machine in this really sanitary space, like everything. And it made me think of being like on a spaceship or like it made me think of like being like a, a um, it's specifically the movie, The Island with Ewan McGregor, which is a horror movie. And it was like, I, th I thought to myself like, okay, we're cogs on this machine, but I have no idea where the fuck this machine is headed. And, it, and it, my, my mind like turned off. It said, this is too clean. This is too clean. This is too sanitary. And I left that yoga class and went and I got myself a beer and a cigarette. I talked with a man and he said, well, smoking is a part of 
that's the sacrifice of uh, being a part of a, being a musician. Now I've been playing music off and on, you know, my entire life, and I find that uh, the the idea of sacrifice to be um, non compelling. Um, I think that uh, you shouldn't have to like smoke to be a musician. Like that's not a rule. Um, so I don't know. Uh, you shouldn't have to. So I don't know. <laughs> it's, it, but it really did mean something to me. The like the art. It really was significant. How clean. I didn't like how clean. Uh, it, it was like nothing. Nothing can grow in such a sanitary space. It just, it seemed too robotic to me. Um, and so that's kind of where I stand with smoking. Like I don't, I don't, I can tell if I'm smoking too much cause it will make me feel bad. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be lethargic. I'll get, um, you know, it won't, it won't satisfy me and, and I'll have to find, you know, uh, and like, right, you know, sometimes I'll change the cigarettes that I smoke just to kind of change it up. And, um, and then I don't really want them as much. I don't want the, the same pack as much. But another thing I noticed too was when I started smoking, I was like into Camels and um, Marlboros. And I hate, I did not like American Spirits. I thought they were absolutely disgusting. And now I won't smoke anything but American Spirits. Um, and, and, um, I, and I'm not into vaping and I'm not into the flavored tobacco, the hookahs and all of that either. So, you know... Um, I don't know. I just, I just want to talk about it. I just want to talk about the smoking and, and, you know, I think that sometimes the social pressure of smoking is worse than actually just having a cigarette itself. Like if like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and I, uh, I think of quitting. I really genuinely do think of quitting. I identify with it very deeply and I am sure that the only way I would be able to quit would be cold turkey. It would it would have to just be because with the other things that I've stopped doing, it would I wanted to. I was ready to. Like with drinking, like I got tired of having to puke for four days. Like I had such bad hangovers. I was hurting myself so bad. Um and you know, and and destroying like just destroying myself. I mean, it would take me so many days to recover from one night of annihilation, which was what I wanted. I wanted to be annihilating myself. And so I got over that. I got over that, that want to be annihilating myself. I don't see smoking as annihilating myself at this point. So, not, and I'm not trying to test it either. You know, I genuinely try to like, I, I thank my tobacco. I thank my coffee. Like it's not, it's not um, something to abuse. And that's and that's with anything that we, we we use in life, from money to relationships to food. You know, if you use it too much or the wrong way, it will backfire. Whether or not whether or not you mean for it to, some things you have to learn as you go. You know, but I but I just see it as I, I don't know if I'm putting too much pressure on myself. You know, it might. I watched a video of a man last night, and he was saying there's he was giving different ideas for quitting, and. You know, they, his suggestion is to just kind of break the pattern of the need. So you have to like go have use a patch one week, use the gum the next week. I guess there's like a nasal spray and 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 change it up from week to week so that your body still gets the nicotine, but slowly ease yourself out of it and then break the pattern of like when you use because like, you know, you have to get really aware of yourself. Like, when do I want a cigarette? Like, what are the times? Like genuinely, or generally, uh, I want a cigarette. Um, I have a romanticized version of it, sitting and having a book, and and you know, uh, you know, uh, having a cup of coffee and just chilling with a blanket. You know, it's like romanticized for me. So, but um, I don't smoke inside. I don't smoke in my car when there's when there's when my you know when my kids or my dogs in it, and I and I just. There are some things like I don't like, like I remember when my cousin, I have a, you know, a lot of younger cousins and some of them, one in particular, you know, was smoking the cigarettes and, and I genuinely rejected him. Like, get the fuck away from me with those. Like, I'm not going to be your dad's, you know, I'm not going to get in trouble for you smoking that. Not, you know, I know I have a, a, I know I smoke, but I don't want anything to do with you smoking. Like, I'm not trying to teach you to smoke and. 
And I've felt that way with other, and no, and it's so hypocritical. It's just, it's such a hypocrisy to even say it. Cause I, I, I smoke, so, um, I get it. But for me, like, I don't want to be like the, the influence. I'm not trying to influence anybody. Um, you know, so I have, uh, I think that's all I have to say about it right now. Um, Yeah, if this is a conversation that, that's helpful, leave some comments, talk about your smoking, like why do you like it, why don't you like it. There's obviously, that's my thing with addiction is like, there's obviously something that keeps it, like, that makes you want it. And when you can admit that to yourself, I find that that made it easier for me to like quit drinking and stuff. It's like, obviously there was something that I liked about it. There was something good that made me, you know, it was fulfilling something, you know. So once you can realize that, you were actually trying to help yourself in some way, you know, um, but now you want to help yourself in a new way or a different way and not have the parting be such a violent, negative thing. Like, fuck, fuck, fuck booze. You know, it's look at what you're doing to me, booze. It's like the booze, right, for example, is it's not its fault. It's not its fault that I don't know how to stop myself from having too much of it, you know. I genuinely feel that way. It's like that stuff can be actually quite medicinal. Like have a hot toddy when you're, you know, sick, you know, if you're in a lot of pain, a shot of whiskey really would help you. Like if you're, you know, and just go to sleep or something, like it's not about hurting yourself, you know? So with anything that we're doing, exercise, people exercise themselves all the time to like just to, to where they just die, drop dead of a heart attack because they just don't know how to stop running or, you know, so this level of, of these impossible kind of like, well, goals where we never get to like relax or crap cross the finish line or like like that that shit you have to let go of it like uh and it's harder said than done i understand yeah i hope that this has been helpful for somebody i um i'm not i think within the specifically like drug addict world it's very important that we don't be judgmental and competitive about the or even preachy or anything like like I didn't I've, I've gone to I, I was in one rehab when I was in high school and it was this experimental one and a lot of therapies and I've tried some therapies and I've done so I've seen a little AA and NA and and I actually uh, started reading the AA book and I liked it um, but then it got too religious for me it wasn't quite my where my mind was at but I will say that in my day <laughs> in my in my time uh, I actually do pray now um to archangels and they help me um so for whatever that's worth like god and the, and angels and archangels and guardian angels and there are uh moments where I will just ask like please just I need help like, because of a physical sensation that is happening, um, you know? And uh, they, it's, like, almost immediate. Um, so you'd be surprised. And it's not something that I feel like I, ha I, I get, like, immune to. I've questioned that. Like, do you get... Because, like, with drugs, you kind of get immune to it. You keep kind of needing more and more and more. And with the prayer, with the angels, it's actually quite fascinating because it's hard to believe that that can work you know a drug is like so you see it to believe it you take it you feel it you see it done whereas like with like if you ask like a being of light to help you and it and it shows up um it, it kind of you know it's not necessarily rational uh for for everyone but it really has helped me praying uh, with angels and with god and jesus the the holy spirit um yeah so yeah, I hope that this video has been helpful. Good luck to you on your journey. You're going to do just fine. Just be patient with yourself and, you know, just try to eat some raw fruits, fruits and veggies for a day and some, have a little extra water or take a little extra nap and a walk. What's the big deal, you know? <laughs> Love you.